Introduction to Digital Photography Distinct Photographers Learning Outcomes In this lesson, we will be looking at some of the finest work from some of the most famous photographers worldwide. There is no better way to delve into photography than to study the best work by some of the most influential and creative people that work in our industry. This is a nice continuation from the time we spent looking at photography styles. Here you will see a combination of these styles and better yet you will see these styles implemented to the highest standard. We will include a wide range of photographers from the earliest days of photography to some who are still with us today. We must look at these auteurs much like the way we studied the origins of photography and the earliest cameras because the standards these artists and photographers have set have created some of the most basic rules that we follow today. This is like the way in which film students and filmmakers study Alfred Hitchcock, Martin Scorsese or Steven Spielberg. So, let's get to it. Ansel Adams Ansel Adams was born on the 20th of February 1902 in San Francisco, California. Adams had a very tough upbringing. His family's business was badly affected by the Great Financial Panic in 1907 and when he was only four years old he badly broke his nose during an earthquake, an injury that marked his facial structure for the rest of his life. The positive result of Adams' somewhat solitary and unmistakably different childhood was the great pleasure and curiosity that he discovered in nature, as evidenced by the long walks he took in the still wild reaches of the Golden Gate. Almost daily, he could be found hiking the dunes or meandering along Lobos Creek, down to Baker Beach or out to the very edge of the American continent. Ansel Adams is probably the most easily recognisable name in photography, even today. His fame and influence is still strongly felt and many have been quoted saying that he has had an indelible effect on their work. Adams is renowned for his stunning photographs of a variety of landscapes. He achieved an unparalleled level of contrast using creative darkroom work. Ansel Adams once said, I hope that my work will encourage self-expression in others and stimulate the search for beauty and creative excitement in the great world around us. With an attitude like this, it is clear that Adams had a great passion for his craft, but moreover, his desire to share and educate others is truly inspiring. Because of this, he is known to many photographers as the father of landscape photography. In fairness, it's very easy to see why. One can visit the official Ansel Adams Gallery in Yosemite National Park, California. Dorothea Lang Dorothea Lang was born on the 26th of May, 1895 in Hoboken, New Jersey, United States. She is famous for the photographs she took during the Great Depression. She took the famous photograph of a migrant mother, which is said to be one of the best known photographs in history. In the 1940s, she also photographed the Japanese internment camps. Her portraits of displaced farmers during the Great Depression greatly influenced later documentary photography. One of the greatest features of Lang's work is the observational nature of her photography, reminiscent of the documentary filmmaker Frederick Wiseman. Steve Bloom Steve Bloom was the author of the very first photography book that I purchased many years ago. I had no idea who he was, nor did I have much care for photography. Of course, a lot has changed since then. Bloom is the photographer who drew me to explore and study photography. 
He carefully chooses his shots, capturing the essence of the animal or wildlife he is focused on. What I love about Bloom's work is that he tends to focus on the eyes of the animals. In a sense, Bloom is very like a portrait wildlife photographer. Lately, Bloom has branched into photographing people who live among animals, spending a lot of time in Africa. He uses a similar approach when framing these people, focusing on getting macro shots of their eyes and facial expressions. Christian Aslund Christian Aslund is a Swedish photographer based in Stockholm. The striking feature of his work is his use of geometry and people in urban areas. His work often reminds me of the way I look at postmodern art. Familiar on the one hand, but utterly ambiguous and intriguing on the other. With Aslan, the framing of his photographs is key. Everything is finely balanced. Perhaps Aslan's greatest work to date is the Honky Kong series in 2013. He has said that the series is a tribute to classic 2D platform games. To achieve that old school 2D feel, Aslan shot from as high above his subjects as possible and used a telephoto lens to render the images flat. This is a pretty unique style of photography and one that relies on the photographer's imagination and skill. The quality in this series lies in the transformation of a seemingly ordinary street into an immersive 2D game screen in which the person becomes a character who looks to navigate through a series of obstacles. Take this example here. One would almost think that the man is in harm's way, hanging on with one hand, with a seemingly bottomless pit at the bottom of the frame. Of course, when one really studies the photograph, It's clear that he has been photographed from above and is lying on his side in an ordinary street. However, the work still retains its effect and Aslan remains one of the most exciting photographers that is working in our industry today. Annie Leibovitz Annie Leibovitz is one of the most famous portrait photographers working today. She is particularly noted because she has photographed many of the world's major celebrities. Quite often, Leibovitz frames her subjects in elaborate and imaginative setups. She began her career in 1970 as a staff photographer, working for the recently launched Rolling Stone magazine. In 1973, Leibovitz became chief photographer of Rolling Stone, and she held this position for 10 years. Leibovitz's work is characterised by her intimacy with her subjects. This is evident in her captivating photographs of celebrities, which really helped define what came to be known as the Rolling Stone look. While working for Rolling Stone, Leibovitz began creating her own personal work, which was very important for her artistic nature. Leibovitz desired subjects that would open their hearts and souls and lives to her. She was awarded the Royal Photographic Society's Centenary Medal and Honorary Fellowship in recognition of a sustained, significant contribution to the art of photography. Robert Kappa Robert Kappa is well known for the many famous wartime photographs he took during his lifetime. Remarkably, he managed to cover five wars. The name Robert Kappa was only the name placed to the photographs that Andre Friedman took and they were marketed under Robert Kappa. Friedman, like Annie Leibovitz, felt that if you were not close enough to the subject, then you wouldn't get a good photograph. He was often seen in the trenches with soldiers when he took the photographs, while most other war photographers preferred to take the photographs from a safe distance. This dedication to his craft produced some hugely intimate photographs during some of the most turbulent times in US and world history. Timothy Hogan 
Timothy Hogan is an award-winning luxury goods and still life photographer and director who works in New York, Los Angeles and London. He is one of the best luxury goods photographers at work today, in a hugely competitive area. Hogan's versatile portfolio has meant that he can adapt to most projects he has worked on. He has worked as a photographer, director and cinematographer. Hogan has worked with clients all around the world and is well known in still life and fashion photography. He recently produced a collection of photos entitled The Finn Project. The Finn Project is built on Hogan's fervent passion for still life photography and surfing. It's a pretty unique topic, one which has not been explored by many other photographers. Hogan's work is always finished with class and style and nothing is left to chance or out of place. David LaChapelle David LaChapelle is the final photographer we will look at in this lesson. He is known internationally and in Israel as a commercial photographer, fine art photographer, music video director, film director and artist. LaChapelle is noted for his colourful, smooth and extroverted style. A style that is charged with sensuality and fantasy. His work is generally packed with accessible popular images and communicates with a wide and demographic audience. La Chapelle has played a crucial role in the promotion of prestigious brands such as Diesel and Tommy Hilfiger. His photography often references art history and sometimes carries social messages. His photographic style has been described as hyper-real and slyly subversive. This is most likely as a result from the time he spent with Andy Warhol, who gave him his first job at Interview Magazine in the 80s. So, what have we learned in this lesson? We have learned about some of the most influential photographers that work and have worked in our area of study. By learning about these talented and immensely creative individuals, I hope you are beginning to think about what attracts you to photography. What style would you like to develop? What does your work say about you? Do you find fragments of your own personality in the photographs you capture? You will have noticed that each photographer that we have looked at had their distinct style of working. And this is a staple of great photographers something that makes their work stand out. I can look at an Ansel Adams picture of a deep ravine and crystal lake and know that it was Adams' work. But don't worry, the idea of looking at this fantastic work is not to discourage you or to say that you are expected to produce work like we've highlighted. On the contrary, our incentive here is to draw on the creativity and hard work of these pioneers and to encourage each other to enjoy what we do and to always strive for the best ways of telling our stories. Like any craft, it takes time to master the styles we want. However, now that we have learned about where photography came from, what the main styles are, and who some of the very best photographers are, we have a firm idea of the kind of work we'll be trying to replicate or work towards in the lessons ahead.